All right, fam, we are out here for day 11 um, for the 30 day challenge on how to improve your relationship by 3x the amount. Let me just make sure volume is all the way up. All right, so today we're gonna talk about recognizing your emotional triggers. But before I get started with that, I want to um, give a shout out to all of the people that's been sending me direct messages or um, have been texting me and just saying, just continue what you're doing. Thank you for putting this out there. We need this in our community. I'm sharing your posts because we need it. So thank you for that. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for watching. And um, what I will say is what you guys may not know about me is that the reason I decided to start with this relationship advice, relationship, just sharing my story really is because I did mention that I am on my second marriage, but what you may not realize is that in between my first and second marriage, I was in the dating stages the entire time, which was 14 years. So for 14 years, I was trying to figure out how to be in the dating stage, how to um, show up as the right person, how to really learn what I needed to learn. So 14 years it took me to really get this thing under control. What you also may not know about me is that I decided to come on here and share this stuff with you guys because I want to shorten your learning curve yes I want to shorten your learning curve and so instead of you having to go through 14 years 20 years 30 years of trying to figure out how to date and how to choose your right mate I decided to come on here and to try to shorten your learning curve for you so um, instead of you there there's a bug out here so instead of you having to worry about what am I going to do how am I going to do this I'm in this dating scene it's not working out Instead of you worrying about all of that, you can just come here, get the information, and start to apply it to your life. So now let me get into the content, which is recognizing your emotional triggers. I want to read this to you because most of us don't realize what a trigger actually is. A trigger is an experience that draws us back into the past and causes old feelings and behaviors to arise. They are often experiences, situations, or stressors that unconsciously remind us of post traumas or emotional upsets. And that's very important for you to realize, especially when you are in your romantic relationship, because a lot of us have not dealt with the past issues, the past traumas that keep showing up in our relationship, which is why we keep having these emotional um, outbreaks or emotional tantrums, because we never dealt with our baggage from before. So um, your emotional triggers actually re-trigger the feelings in the form of sadness, anxiety, or even panic. So sometimes maybe, maybe you have never dealt with the fact that you felt abandoned as a child. Maybe your dad walked out or your mom walked out and left you and the other parent alone. Or maybe they took you to foster care and dropped you off or something like that. Something that was very traumatic for you. And so now you really deal with abandonment issues. But you don't know that's what they're actually quote unquote called. You just know that every time you get into a relationship or every time you get close to somebody they seem to leave you behind and so because you have not addressed where this uh, root cause is coming from they keep popping up and showing up in all of your relationships and showing up at times that you don't even think or you're not even aware that they would show up so they are re-triggered by something that happened to you in the past. And they could, again, they can bring up sadness or anxiety or that whole fear or even panic that's going on with you. And just realize that when you are trying to recognize what your emotional triggers are, is that they don't necessarily show up as a specific um, situation. It's just something that triggers in you, again, which is why it's called a trigger. It's something that just happens. It come, kind of comes out of nowhere for you, and you don't really know what's, what's actually happening. So it's one of the things that is triggering you to, this bug, if you don't get out of here, <laughs> it's one of the things that is triggering you to react the way that you are reacting or, you know, lash out the way that you are lashing out. And um, the situations that you find yourself in, you 
regret later on and you're like this is not the way that I want to show up this is not how I want to react I want to be able to control my emotions and actually express myself explain myself better but I'm doing a horrible job at it at this point and so you're realizing this is what's going on and so when you find yourself in these situations you find later on that you're like this is not desirable behavior this is not the way that I want to keep showing up and so you're trying to figure out what is actually going on so when you're trying to recognize what your emotional triggers are you want to understand what those thoughts and feelings are in order to change them because you cannot change what you do not know is happening or do not understand you have to know what's going on so anytime your spouse your um, boyfriend husband girlfriend fiance comes to you tries to explain to you something or just out of the blue says something let's go back to the example of, of abandonment so if there's say something like you know what I'm gonna go out of town with my friends and you are feeling like well how come you didn't ask me to go like why is it just the trip for you guys or whatever it is you're going through all of your emotional thing emotional internal things that are happening and then they start to come out in the form of anger or you being pissed off or you lashing out or you yelling so it's coming out in all these other forms but it's because of that root cause and and root cause in this instance is because you felt abandoned young when you were younger another thing is that when you are recognizing your emotional triggers is that the key here is to catch yourself when you get triggered so if you notice that every time your guy or girl comes to you and says again in this case I need to take some time away I'm going out um, a town on a trip and you think that it's unexpected for whatever reason you don't feel that it's quote-unquote reasonable to you you are starting to throw a temper tantrum but you're recognizing this is what's happening now on, from now on you're recognizing what is what was happening prior to you starting to go down the rabbit hole of throwing a temper tantrum and so an example another example of your trigger could be when your spouse or your partner dismisses your comments or your feelings about something whatever it is that you were trying to express to them and then what you notice is that your current reaction is you get angry and start to yell and fuss and cuss at them right so what you want to do is a new response Think about what you can do from now on in order to change this behavior. So instead of yelling, cussing, and fussing at your spouse like you usually do, you go to him or her and you say, you know what? I'm actually feeling a bit hurt or my feelings are hurt because of X, Y, and Z. And then explain yourself so your partner can understand you a lot better. Because a lot of times we don't understand why this other person is lashing out at us. And so because you don't understand why they're lashing out at you, then you start to lash, lash out back at them because you're like, what the H is going on? Like, why are you acting so crazy? Why are you acting so schizo or whatever word you try to insert there? Uh, so, so, so understand that when you um, are recognizing your triggers, that you recognize your triggers, you think about what your current response is, and then you actually think about what your new response will be from now on. Hey, Ella, I see you. Thanks for watching. So yes, what your new response is going to be and then start to make sure that you implement this new response each and every time one of your triggers is um, activated. Now, a, a list of emotional triggers that we don't think about is um, acceptance. That is an emotional trigger. Being in control. A lot of us, when we are in our relationships, especially with our spouse, we think that, you know, we are our own person. You can't tell me what to do. You can't tell me how to react. You can't tell me what to say. You can't tell me what to wear, etc., etc., etc. So we always want to be in control of the situations. And being in a relationship, it really is about compromise. It really is about that um, making your relationship work for the both of you, not one-sided. Not one-sided. Not one-sided. Not one-sided. I cannot say that enough. It's not one-sided at all. So try to relinquish that control, especially if you already um, trust your partner or if they have not given you any reason why you should not trust them. Try to relinquish that control and just trust that they have your back. At least give them the opportunity to mess up. Don't automatically think that they are going to mess up. Okay? So that's something to think about. Relinquish the control. It doesn't have to always be done your way. There is, There are multiple ways to get the same result. So just keep that in mind. Try to relinquish that being in control thing. 
um, another uh, emotional trigger is wanting to be right always having to say the last word in an argument <laughs> but you want to be right about everything you've experienced everything anytime I try to come to you as the spouse just to try to um, get you to see something new or have, tell you about a new experience that I've been through you've been, been there and done that been there done that and then you won't even let me tell my story because now you got to take it over because you have to show me that you've been there and done that yourself just give me a little time to actually express what I need to express there another emotional trigger could be your lack of love so again this could be something that you were experiencing as a child that's now coming out and um, you keep attracting the same people that are not really giving you that love and so consistent you consistently you feel like you are lacking love from your um, partner your spouse fiance whatever so and then there is lack of safety lack of safety is another trigger another tr tr trigger <laughs> is lack of attention a lot of us need attention in our relationships and that's not necessarily a bad thing just realize that you will not be able to get all all the attention that you want every single time it's great when you can get the attention that you need the attention that you seek but you're not going to get that that attention that you need and seek when you want it every single time when you need it every single time so lack of attention is another trigger wanting to be liked is another trigger we want to be liked by our spouse we want to be acknowledged by our spouse we want to feel like we are again safe and secure with our spouse we just want their approval and that's okay just don't take it overboard <laughs> um, wanting to be needed in your relationship can be an emotional trigger because sometimes I hear this actually from my men clients they complain that they don't stay with the woman or they don't continue to choose the woman because she acts like she doesn't need him around and so if he's not needed around then why be there instead of um, trying to figure out how they can actually work together because this is the quote unquote the biggest thing that they're dealing with instead of you know um, explaining how they're feeling and everything they just decide to walk away never to be seen again ghost the girl and she's wondering what the heck happened and so wanting to be needed in your relationship actually is an emotional itch trigger and you have to figure out why you need to be needed in your relationship all right uh, another one is to be valued of course we all want to be valued we all need to be valued in order to stay in the relationship but that's also an emotional trigger another one is being consistent I talked about being consistent actually on day one when I started doing this um, so we're on day 13 today so day one I talk about being consistent it's not always the prettiest thing it's not always the thing that you're like oh boy I really just do not feel like dealing with my partner today my spouse today I really just want to be in my own world but the more you are consistent the more that you just do the things that you don't really want to do the better your relationship is going to be in the long haul not maybe not necessarily in that moment because I get it we all get tired I get tired myself I even told my husband uh, the other day you think I always want to cook for you because his love language is um um, acts of service so that's his love language but I wanted him to know that I get tired too but I get it that that I need to feed you that's your love language and so I want to make sure that I'm feeding my husband but sometimes I get tired too honey I get tired too so <laughs> yes you need to laugh because hell I had to laugh about it I need to laugh too <laughs> hey Rowing, how are you <laughs> thanks for watching uh, and then finally which is uh, and, and the final emotional trigger is wanting to be treated fairly which makes a heck of a difference in a relationship nobody wants to be in a one-sided relationship nobody wants to always do what you want them to do and and honestly that's just not possible anyway because maybe I'm just having an old crappy day I'm having a crappy day and I'm starting to take my crappy day out on you because you keep bothering me <laughs> um, I give you your space so how come you can't give me my space or so whatever that fair treatment is that you are needing in that moment whatever that is that is what you are seeking so being treated fairly is also an emotional trigger so now the homework <laughs> what are you going to do to recognize or I should say how are you going to recognize what triggers you in your relationship in order to improve your relationship over these next 30 days what are you going to do to figure out I'm sorry how are you going to figure out what your emotional triggers are 
and then what are you going to do about it I actually already gave you the formula before and I'll give it to you right before I leave again so the first thing that you want to do is to recognize what your trigger is what gets your blood boiling when your partner is doing X Y and Z what gets your and it could be more than one thing for most of us it is more than one thing so what are your triggers Think about what your triggers are and actually write your triggers down so you can see them. You know what they are. What, the more you write things down, the more it sticks up here. So that's why I'm saying write it down. Write down what your triggers are. The next thing is when you write down, what do you currently do? Oh, you're welcome, Ella. Ella says, OMG, I love this. I really needed to hear this today. You're very welcome. This is why I'm doing this because I want to shorten your learning curve <laughs> and to increase the marriage rate while simultaneously decreasing the divorce rate this is what i'm here for uh, i've been there done it it's not fun so anyway the second thing is let me go back to the first one just in case somebody is just joining the first one is to recognize what your emotional trigger is write that down the second thing is to recognize how you currently react what is it that you do once you get triggered once you want to pop off once you actually want to strangle your spouse i'm not saying do that i'm just saying sometimes we think about these things because we don't really know how to um manage our stress we don't really we don't know how to express ourselves in a more productive way so what do you currently do do you lash out do you punch walls do you try to smack them hey abby sola how are you honey bun <laughs> thanks for watching boo <laughs> um anyway so what do you do currently after you get triggered what do you do write that down and then finally write down what you want to do differently how do you want to handle that situation differently yes how do you want to handle it differently now how do you want what is going to make sure what what are you going to do to make sure that your relationship improves what are you willing to try differently what must you do from now on to make sure that your relationship gets better and better and better so you don't have to worry about or at least decreasing the chances that a um, divorce can occur or will occur because you're taking the steps you're doing the actions you are actively working on your relationship because it makes a difference it's make it makes a difference on how you show up it makes a difference on how um, productive you are throughout your day it makes a difference about how you talk about your spouse it makes a difference how much you want to actually go back home to your spouse all of this makes a difference actively working on your relationship makes a difference hey Chandra I see you boo thanks for watching actively working on your relationship is going to make a hell of a difference in how you show up in the world period because most of us try to compartmentalize things we try to compartmentalize our relationships and our lives and you really cannot compartmentalize your life everything is coming to you all at once and you have to figure out how this is working out for you so Abby Sola says what must we do to actively work on our relationship yeah 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 what are you going to do I want to know what you gonna do <laughs> to actively work on your relationship today we're talking about recognize your recognizing your emotional triggers so that way when your boo come to you and he start nagging and nagging and nagging right <laughs> you know how you are going to now handle that situation instead of acting the doggone fool and going back and forth and going down the rabbit hole with him you decide to take the high road and yes, I understand sometimes it's easier said than done, honey. I totally get that, okay? But you have to be the bigger person because they can't keep arguing by themselves. It gets old real quick. They get tired real quick when you just shut up. <laughs> it is hard work, Chandra. It is. But if you want to make sure that you are old and gray with your boo, then this is what you got to do today because one thing that I haven't said until right now is the more you work on your relationship the easier your relationship is going to get because you're gonna understand your boo so much better they gonna understand you and then by the time you get to the um, stages where everybody is looking at y'all and envious everybody always talk about Barack and Michelle Obama or excuse me just somebody that you know has a pretty good relationship it took work to get there boo yes it took work to get there so only thing that we see is the result 
we don't see or we weren't privy to see any of all uh, any of their um, journey we get to watch the movies or read the books but we weren't actually there for their journey and so if you want to be the next it couple you got to work on your stuff today so today you work on it tomorrow you reap the rewards and the benefits and that's with everything your relationship is no different your romantic relationship is no different one last example before I go <laughs> most people like to say oh it takes so much work it takes so much work it takes so much work but you work for everything in your life when we go out and get these degrees and go out and get our education we don't get that in one day we go out for years to work on getting that degree work on getting those letters behind our name so how could we won't do the same thing to make sure that we don't get a divorce? I'm going to leave it right there. Do the very thing that you would do if you were out there trying to get that degree, if you were out there trying to get that next business adventure, if you were out there trying to, you know, start your own business. All of this stuff takes time. Your relationship is no different. I will see you guys for day number 14. We almost halfway there. <laughs> Tomorrow, around the same place, same time. See y'all then. Thanks for watching.